Good morning, folks. You are watching the departure of umbral magnetic fields and some small plasma filament tornadoes on the southwestern limb. We've got a good bit on the ground and will stretch to deep space today, but we're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day on the sun features the southern coronal hole and otherwise inactive portions of our star. We may expect further solar wind stream intensifications towards the weekend, but this morning, all telemetry is dropping density, speed, and temperature descending to continue the geomagnetic quiet that has already lasted a few days. Let's look at tonight, tomorrow, and Friday here because the USA could see all four seasons. Major snowstorm driving well south into the country as nightly red rips up through the convergence line after heat has ascended across the eastern side of the storms. The system moves on by Saturday morning, but the jet stream will remain bent. Top quakes of the last day included a blood echo and numerous others surrounding it over in the northeast corner of Oceania. And we're going to stick with the ground momentarily. This is Crater Lake sitting amidst the Tal volcano. The before and after of the ashfall event from its latest eruption is a harsh sight. Verdant foliage turned to dusty ash. FYI, they have yet to fully remove the alert status at the volcano, but it has been much quieter since that one day a couple months ago. Up next... A group that claims to garner extreme pre-seismic behavior of major quake regions before they crack. What's interesting is this group is going in the opposite direction that we do over at QuakeWatch.net, where the goal is to nail down the behaviors of the 24 to 48 hours prior to the break. Instead, they claim to see months to years of activity, indicating the coming break. Now, while you might think this is useless because you can't put a region on alert for three years or even a few months, it's just impractical. But... What if you were able to nail down the most at-risk 10% of fault lines or so right now, like we do? Then this other group's long-term tracking could perhaps tell you which regions to exclude as showing no signs. They would actually be complementary and helping to better constrain the alerts. Golf clap. A quick note here about them ramping up the warp disk searches and discoveries across the cosmos. Here they say that a few snaps of Alma was all that was needed to reveal the ripple structure around a baby star. <laughs> Barely a baby star. It's still coming together. It's a zygote star. Either way, it turns out the wavy sheets come at the very beginning of their electric field existence. Probably goes at the galactic level, too. Up next, folks, the premise of this Nature article is that we're just a few nukes away from a new ice age and global famine. Hmm. The high stratosphere nuclear winter is a real thing. It's like the volcanic winter of blocking out the sun with particles and the ground freezes below. It's important to remember that climate scientists swear up and down that those high clouds of water vapor are what warm the planet and it is the low level clouds that cool us despite their allowing the light to travel through more of the atmosphere. But getting back to this because we don't want to go off on a tangent, indeed, one level 7 volcano or one level 7 stupid move by humans and global warming goes bye-bye in about one day. Last but not least, Cosmic Rays, another cloud maker and planet cooler. An Earth-to-Sky calculus out in California has demonstrated that we've got a 12% increase in count rates over just the last three years. We are at the modern cosmic ray maximum on Earth as the sun has been weaker and Earth's magnetic field has begun to fade. We should get a brief reduction in these counts over the coming few years as sunspots return, but it's expected to drive harder and harder each 11-year minimum until the grand solar minimum and a further weakening field allow cosmic rays to completely take over the atmosphere later this century, which allows for the weather events that tricked our ancestors into thinking the wind and sun and water and ice and earth were living gods, furious with them. We've had a nice few centuries off here in the nursery. Nature is waking up to see how we've behaved. Uh-oh. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.